The story is told of how during the very difficult days of war in Bosnia, a medical relief mission traveled to that country. Most cities had been torn apart, and as a result, many people were displaced from their homes and settled in refugee camps. When the relief mission arrived at one particular camp, all of the refugees came to meet the team. Among the refugees was a tiny elderly woman who came forward with a big smile and an aura of contentment. She was anxious to tell the visitors some great news. The team wondered what kind of good news she could bring in the midst of so much chaos. The lady simply said, they took everything we had, but they couldn't take our faith in God. This woman had lost everything she had, house, possessions, clothes, perhaps some relatives and friends. Yet somehow she held on to her faith. In today's first reading, we also find someone who had lost everything and yet kept his faith. His name was Job, and I'm sure most of us remember his story well. Job was a good, holy, and righteous man who, from one day to the next, lost everything. He loses his children, his property, his livestock, and is subjected to a very painful skin disorder. Today's passage comes from Job's conversation with one of his friends. His friend had told him that he is suffering because of some wrongdoing that he has done, and that he had to repent Job protests his innocence. He has lived an honest, pious, responsible life. Thus, Job begins to think that God is the one that has treated him unfairly. He has done nothing to deserve his pain. In his depression, Job begins to question if life has any meaning at all. That's what we hear in today's first reading. He describes life as an endless cycle of pain and suffering. He sees life as a drudgery, hopeless, filled with woe, months of misery, trouble, nights, anxiety, etc. In our lives, many times we have felt like Job, haven't we? At times we feel that we have been treated unfairly by our God. For example, how many of us were praying for Anthony Parodi, the 16-year-old boy from our parish who died a couple of weeks ago? Was God not listening to the hundreds of people praying for him? Was God oblivious to his suffering and the pain of his mother, father, siblings, relatives, and friends? When tragedies like that happen, they can shake our faith. From the beginning of time, human beings have tried to make sense of suffering and pain. At times, people interpret, or rather misinterpret, disasters and calamities as God's punishment. But we know that that can't be true. After all, bad things happen to the good and bad alike. Think about the coronavirus, for example. The entire world being affected by this disease and I suppose that there have been times in which we have protested like Job because we feel that we've done nothing to deserve these circumstances. At times, everything seems black and bleak. And it seems as if we have hit a wall. Someone once said that there are times in our lives God allows us to hit a wall so that when we cannot see the horizon, we are forced to look up to heaven and cry out to him. This is what Job did. He looked up to heaven. He demanded a day in court with God so he could prove his innocence and prove God's injustice. Job complained and looked for answers. But the one thing he never did, he never stopped talking to God. He kept open the lines of communication with him. He had all the reasons in the world to walk away from God, but he did not. In our trials, tribulations, and sufferings, we must do the same. 
feeling devastated when we are suffering is natural, and that's okay as long as it doesn't stop there. Follow Job's example. Vent with your friends, but turn to God as well. No matter what, never stop praying. Ask, argue, cry, lament, question if you must, but don't stop talking to the Lord. We may never find an answer that will satisfy us in this life, but never cut the channel of communication with the one who gives meaning to our lives. A life of prayer is the one that allowed Job to, at the end of the book, to listen to the voice of God. After 37 chapters and more than 300 questions from Job to God, the Lord speaks. What does God say? I think most of us know the story of Job, the beginning of the book. But few of us actually know the end of the book. Go back to that at some point this week. It's really beautiful. God says something like this. You have been questioning me. Now I will question you. Where were you when I founded the earth? Who determined its size? Have you ever commanded the morning? Have you ever entered into the sea or walked in the depths of the abyss? Tell me if you know it all. Where does light dwell? Can you raise your voice among the clouds? I made everything. You see, Job did not get an immediate explanation of why he lost everything. But over time he came to a deeper understanding of God's awesomeness. When Job was confronted with the ineffable mystery of a universe that he had not created and could never understand, Job's hope and trust in God reignited. God does not respond to the problem of suffering in the book of Job, but Job went from someone who only knew about God to someone who, who knew God, someone who had heard his voice, somebody to whom God has spoken directly. And as he heard him, Job began to understand that God knew of his suffering, that in his pain, in his anguish, he was not alone, that God was walking with him. The same goes for us. In our suffering, we too can encounter God. We may never know why God allows a particular cross in our life, but God never, ever abandons us. Job's despair became an opportunity to hope. His doubts became the opportunity for a deeper faith. My friends, life is difficult, and we all suffer in this world. Yet, yet we must remember that everything can be taken away from us. We may lose our homes, our health, our loved ones. Everything and everyone around us can abandon us, betray us, and hurt us. We can lose everything except our faith in God. Amen.